In the search for sustainable materials in the fashion world, many designers are amazingly resourceful. We've already seen fiber made out of milk or wood, and even vegetable cashmere made from soy. Well, Joy, that's not all. One Spanish designer has come up with yet another natural source of fashionable fabrics, pineapples. Can you imagine what that looks like? I certainly couldn't, so we had to go find out more. The leather look is deceptive. The fabric used to make these fashion products is purely plant-based. It comes from the fibers of pineapple leaves and weighs just a quarter of what real leather would. British designer Alicia Lay has been using this innovative natural material in her shoe collections for about a year now. Although it is a natural product, it actually looks really very stylish. It's got a natural texture to it. Um, it comes in several different colors and it's nice and soft and pliable. It's easy to take care of and durable. The fabric made from pineapple fibers is called Pinatex and is made by the British startup Ananas Anam. Its founder, Carmen Hijosa of Spain, spent about a decade developing the material. Before that, she worked in the leather industry for 15 years. While looking for a sustainable alternative to leather, she experimented with banana and agave leaves before she found pineapple. This particular pineapple fiber, which has been used in the Philippines for 400 years, traditionally to make very beautiful, very light textiles, um, I realized then the quality of this fiber because it's very, very fine, but it's very soft and flexible, but also strong. Waste from the pineapple harvest on the Philippines provides the raw material. Farmers collect the leaves and separate the fibers using a special machine. Then the fibers are dried in the sun. From then, a Filipino factory produces a non-woven fleece-like material, which is coated with polymers and bonding agents to make the piña text robust and long-lasting. About 480 leaves go into each square meter. When I started to work with the factory, um, they had never done anything like it because they were used to working and they still work with polyurethane, you know, petroleum-based fibers, which are very much, much easier, they're all even, stronger. Um, and it took us a, f a couple of years to come up to a mesh that wasn't falling up, up to bits. In the meantime, Pinatex fulfills all industry standards and is ready to go on the market. Here in the Pineapple Room in London, several designers display their products. <laughs> Among them are the Spanish firm Maravilla Bags and the Australian clockmaking company Time for Change. Well-known companies like German sporting goods manufacturer Puma are also experimenting with the material, and customers seem to like it. It comes from the earth and then it goes back into the earth and it doesn't harm anything in between. So, you know, if no chemicals are used when it's made, it's all completely natural. So I think it's great. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think something that we're using as an industry byproduct or a waste that is otherwise being burnt or sent into a landfill to be made into shoes and bags and watch straps. I think it's a fantastic idea. British fashion expert Alison Louis found the fabric unusual and it drew her attention. As an investor, she observes the fashion scene and supports startups that place special value on sustainability. It could change the whole shape of the industry. It won't happen overnight, but in time it will. And help these communities in, in all different countries, in developing countries become more sustainable. A lot of them is, are women behind it all, so it will help empower the women in these communities. So actually, it's a really long effect um, on all stages of the chain. Ananas Anam founder Carmen Hijosa wants to continue expanding. Demand for her pineapple leaf fabric already exceeds what she can produce. Hardly any city in the world boasts of more swimming pools than Johannesburg. In the dry climate of the South African metropolis, pools could be valuable sanctuaries for birds, amphibians, and insects. 
Instead, their ecological wastelands sterile and brimming with chemicals. One South African architect is looking to improve the situation by enlisting the help of nature. He is installing what he calls eco pools. Of tree in the middle of the view as well. So a Johannesburg skyline like this one is a sight Anthony Philbrick rarely sees from his clients' homes. The owner wants to convert her pool into a pond. So you would actually have rock underwater here. Keeping the swimming pool water clean involves a lot of work, and it harms the environment. The creepy crawly, and we still keep the existing systems. I really would like to convert my pool um, into a natural wetland area because I'm using way too much chemicals every day. The water quality is not great. It feels not nice on the skin when you get out of the pool. Animals don't like the heavily chlorinated water either. Philbrick transforms pools like this one into a natural wildlife habitat. The architect was inspired by the swimming ponds popular in Austria in the 1980s. He took the idea to South Africa. Johannesburg has such good weather that one in three houses has a swimming pool. Uh, so if you look at an aerial photograph, the whole city is littered with them. There are 100,000 of them in the whole city. These conventional swimming pools are ecological deserts. They are full of toxins and really quite unpleasant. This pool is set to become an oasis, badly needed by the local wildlife. Water is scarce here. The South African winters are especially dry. Sometimes fire warnings have to be issued. The animals are struggling to survive. They can't find water anywhere. Plants play a key role in renaturing the pools. Anthony Philbrick has been working with this nursery for years. He's always on the lookout for new native species. The architect wants to use and preserve South Africa's rich biodiversity. When he began realizing his vision back in 2007, there were only 15 water plant species available to him. Thanks to his demand, the selection has more than doubled. The growers are all, are, are all people who are mad about plants, so you tell them, go and find some more plants to grow for us, They'll, they go out and they come up with all of these wonderful and wild species for us. It's been fantastic. About ten. Yeah. That's how the architect found this particular plant. The water starlet's blossoms glow like stars in the night sky against the green background. These plants are fairly rare. They're from Namaqualand. They're really beautiful. Uh, and their, their environment is slowly shrinking. The Western Cape, as we know, the, it's getting less and less rain. Uh, and these are, these are swamp plants from an area which is fast drying up. Endangered species find a safe haven in the wetland pools. That improves their chance of survival. These plants are destined for the pond of a longtime customer. He's created a watery paradise and natural landscape in his own backyard, ideal for swimming, and home to local wildlife. It used to be a dried out lawn. The swimming ponds bring nature back to life and they create new jobs. This water landscape functions like a natural purification facility. A wetland was created alongside the actual swimming pool. It contains plants that clean the rainwater. From here, the water is pumped into the pool. In order to clean this, the, the only way we could do it is have this biological filter, as I see it. It's a, the plants, as they grow, they take in nutrients out the water. As long as that's happening, you don't have algae growth. A couple of kilometers away, Natalia Dinat also had her swimming pool reconstructed. It used to be a normal rectangular basin. The new natural pool has brought about many changes. The pool really did bring us closer to nature. Um, it's brought a lot of consciousness to not only my family, but my friends as well, because everybody's interested in what kind of pool this is and how is it so clean. Water from the pool tastes better than tap water. The owner likes it, and so do all the animals. So that's all for today's Eco at Africa show. Visit our website if you want to find out more about our stories. Bye-bye from Abuja, Nigeria. Well, Kenya is a beehive of activity. Of course, we're coming to uh, election time, and so temperatures are so high. But NT, we'll see you again next week. And for everybody else who has made time for the show, thank you all for watching. I'm Joy Doreen Bira from Nairobi, Kenya. Until next time, bye-bye.